The turn of the second millennium signifies a bad future for Zimbabwe, from Africa's bread basket to the basket care. A number of costly government policies such as the ambitious and popular invasion of the DRC and the ill-planned land reform policy endlessly halted the country's balance of payment, employment rates and inflation rates. In 1999, IMF and the World Bank suspended financial aid to Zimbabwe and in 2002, Zimbabwe was booted from the Commonwealth of Nations owing to gross human rights abuses by the government and massive voter rigging. All this costed Zimbabwe dearly, with an alarming 1,000% inflation rate recorded in 2006. In 2008, the country was totally in chaos as most companies deserted Zimbabwe in search of better and more friendly business environments. This has led to massive unemployment and laughable GDP in the country. situation in Zimbabwe where employment has become scarce. People are left with no choice but to create jobs for themselves as means of resuscitating the living giants. According to research carried out around the globe, entrepreneurship is the capacity and willingness to develop, manage and organize a business venture with any of its resources to make profit. Entrepreneurship has significantly helped resuscitate struggling Zimbabwe economy with barber shops, car wash providing employment prospects. Due to the financial crisis that has affected the country and the lack of job opportunities, it has resulted in too many companies paying peanuts to their employees. Even some other people who are qualified to do jobs staying without employment. So the little that people are getting, instead of just staying home idle, some people choose just to do the work, hard labor, and that one has to cut for, it doesn't work. So most of the people are turning into entrepreneurs, mixing their, the, the, the little salary that they have, and doing other part-time businesses, just to cut for their families, to cut for the school fees of their children, and other responsibilities that they have as breadwinners. During our research, to see how families are benefiting from entrepreneurship, we came across a lecturer at Midland State University, who is a lecturer in the Department of Entrepreneurship, who gives us a highlight on how entrepreneurship is benefiting people and how they are surviving with the Zimbabwean economy and how important is it to be an entrepreneur with the falling economy of the country. Hi, my name is Pumlan Dube. I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, what I find to be the biggest advantage of entrepreneurship is that my income, I have to spend before I'm taxed. I'm taxed on the profit, not on my income. You see, that's what I find to be the biggest. But the challenge is, well, maybe finding business. Uh, what do you call it? What's the term? Consistent business to enable you to pay your workers, whether you've done business at the month or not. The employees will expect a paycheck at the end of the month. Yeah. Well, with regards to the economy of the country, I think this is the opportunity to get into business because uh, when the economy is stable, what it means is everyone will be generally having a regular supplier and will not be able to take a new supplier. Yeah, I think that's all. As we have heard from our lecturer from the Department of Entrepreneurship, these are some of the added advantages of entrepreneurship. Therefore, we are urging all people that may they think about it because you can never depend only on the money that you get from salaries. Because if you have to look at the money, it's never enough.
This land, our land, is our Zimbabwe, a land of peace for you and me. Hi guys. <laughs> My name is Tetsu Nanchala. I'm a fourth year media society student. Um, My friend and I are part of this competition because we realize that the situation is big that there is no point in just coming back when we can make money out of the people that are here. So we decided to start a business. Business is not bad at all. Like, no, it's uh, it's a profit of ten it's a profit of ten dollars per day. I'm going to just the dollars. So, per month, to pay it's more than hundred dollars. I've also been inspired by my aunt. She's also into entrepreneurship. And she's been able to do whatever she wants. So like, I mean, I want to be someone who's, who's independent, and this is helping me. I also love saving. So like, I got through my professional life. I'm going to do Chinese. 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 I'm going to my bands, my clothing, the mass of same are bigger. I don't do what I think about you. I have a good fish. I don't know what I don't know. Tinga, my look, never make a fish. But it's one is in two and a man who's not going to take a sheet. My big. So I have a look at two women in the good thing. What do you think is so? Is she do that? No, that tea government is about. My <laughs> Yatuguti, <laughs> One of the reasons why the economies of developing countries were progressing at a slow level is because they were not tapping into the plus or minus 50% of their human capital. India, which has one of the most efficiently growing economy, is because they are tapping into small to medium enterprises, including women, that is SMA. Gweru, a city in Zimbabwe, has adapted to this SME method. 
the women of Gweri have ventured into entrepreneurship instead of staying back home, taking care of the house, the kids, and playing the housewife role. The business of making handmade bags have transformed the lives of women, making them independent women, thus empowering them. Um, Tanaka Masuka, I'm a camera operator. I operate uh, at the Midland State University. Uh, my clients are mainly students, uh, although I have other clients who are not students. Um, I charge a dollar per pick, uh, that's a soft copy. Uh, if a client uh, asks me uh, to print uh, the soft copy, I can also do so. Uh, that will be uh, two bags. Uh, a photo. I started my job, uh, I think it was in 2015, and I have, I, I now have a, a good name in terms of taking pics and being a videographer. I enjoy my work, I'm driven by passion, and I am making a better or I can say I'm making uh, profits uh, in this industry of videos and photos and I'm enjoying a lot. Uh, I'm earning a lot uh, in photography especially and with the money that I get from photography uh, that's the money that I use for my welfare, for my food, uh, for even for part of my school fees so i can say i'm earning a lot uh, through photography and i hope that in five years time i would own a, a number of studios and even a, a, a bigger company which deals with uh, photos and videos uh, mainly to cater for weddings funerals or any events as My name is Fitzpatrick Capet, an entrepreneur. Sometime in 2008, I started my company. Uh, my company is called DigiPrint Studios. DigiPrint Studios, uh, uh, the operations are like we do media productions, media products both print and electronic. When we talk of print, uh, we, it's like, it's like a, an advertising a agent, whereby you have a client, the client will give you the task to design some adverts for them, so that they fly maybe one of my newspapers, or to radio, or to television. Also, my product, the other products that we we produce are like events, like event management, things like weddings, shoot weddings, my uh, party, and uh, some corporate videos. I trained as an artist that you know in the best of technology. Then, after training, I started uh, developing some interests. And also because of uh, my economic hardships in Zimbabwe since 2000, things were now, you know, there were no jobs, everything. So you are now trying to, to make a living out of what you have learned. So what happened is when I was attached by many companies, including ZBC, Kalamazoo, that uh, concentrate on, on that field. Uh, automatically you find yourself doing your own things to get money.
vending is widely considered a female domain. However, the prevailing economic tide in the country is also led to their male counterparts engaged in the practice. One Mr. Kashiri, in his late 50s, has a thriving cosmetic business right by the nose of the campus gate. He notes how female students have kept him in business, enabling him to get by as they need to keep up appearances. Audio jungle. The closing of industry that employed people who could utilize their talents and allowed for skills development meant that most people who do not have academic qualifications have been left stranded and unable to be formally employed. However, the growth of the informal sector has allowed people to venture into small businesses such as shoe repair and carpeting, areas that allow them to use their individual talent and skills to earn a living. Hello guys, welcome to the 30 Minutes of Enlightenment, the only program that makes your TV licenses worth it. That glitch, my name is Robson Tliwayo, aka Robbie Trip. Today joining us on our Enlightenment Info Chair is the Minister of Finance, Princely Moyo. He's going to be telling us about how the school has helped in financing entrepreneurship programs by students on campus. So join us at 7.30 tonight, don't miss out. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, I'm Lighton Nzume, but officially I'm Dr. Lighton Nzume, Sia and they call me Alakat, a name uh, which was ascribed or which is credited to the class which graduated in 2016 at the Midlands State University. Uh, they were in level 1-1 one, one, when they coined the term Alakat. Uh, they said my teaching approach has got an Alakat style and I have maintained and I have proudly continued to invest in Alakat and I have maintained that Alakat is a brand. I consider myself as an entrepreneur uh, to an extent, uh, to, to a larger extent. I, because what I believe in entrepreneurship, I should be productive. Mm. And I think uh, in academia, I have distinguished myself uh, in terms of nurturing uh, media studies cadres. Uh, to deploy or uh, utilize critical lenses in terms of looking at the world. So I consider myself, in terms of producing figures, so I consider myself as an entrepreneur. But I would also want to say I consider myself as an entrepreneur in the sense that I have not been confined uh, in a lecture room setup. I, I have moved around, especially in the area of research. I have been innovative in terms of knowledge contribution. Uh, I have published quite a significant number of papers which I believe uh, can change the world, which I believe can also inspire confidence, can also inspire uh, the younger generation in terms of how they look, especially theories uh, or knowledge which is grounded in critical theory. And I also want to point out that uh, as an entrepreneur, uh, I have not only been involved in knowledge production, but uh, if you look at our in setup, MSU is an investor uh, or a stakeholder-driven institution. Uh, they, as a university, we always value our link with industry, and I have immensely contributed uh, in, terms, in terms of 
shaping and structuring as well as fixing the premises of discourse in the uh, in the football and the media industry in Zimbabwe. For example, I have extensively I have been involved in consultancy with the Premier Soccer League as well as the Zimbabwe Football uh, Association in Zimbabwe. So that's why I call myself an entrepreneur. And besides that, uh, on a number of occasions, I've been banked on a number of projects in my rural uh, home, that is, that's in Gokwe. There are a number of projects. I wish one of these days you could visit Gokwe. I am a successful farmer, of course, at a larger, at a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've been hoping, I've applied for, for land uh, at the Ministry of um, Agriculture. And I hope one of these days I will be able to, to grab at least an eight or an A1 farm. But, you know, given limited resources or given the small land which I inherited from my father, I have been involved in cattle production, that's livestock production, goods production, etc. So that's why I consider myself as an entrepreneur. So I'm not somebody, I'm like Franz Fanon. Fra Fanon was not just a philosopher, <laughs> but he was also practical. So I'm pragmatic in terms of my ideas. So when you look at how I've contributed to academia, and how I have also contributed in my own community. And it explains why, for your own information, uh, colleagues uh, or my mates, uh, the dwellers in Gokwe Kabyun, where I hear you from, they are always calling for me, they are always challenging me to consider the opportunity uh, and represent them in the House of Assembly as their legislator. Mm -hmm. Largely because they have seen my contributions. I am somebody who is pragmatic, so I am an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So entrepreneurship is the way to go. Problem that we have in Zimbabwe, my brother, uh, the missing link, which you want to talk about, I, I believe it's a my, just a microcosm of the macrocosm. What I want to point out is that Zimbabwe, uh, just like other the so-called post-colonial states, uh, they still need to go under or they still need to protect the phase of decolonization. Uh, Kwame Anton Apia, one of the respected uh, African-American scholars, bemoans that the, time, the attainment of independence by African nations does not mark the end of colonialism. Uh, if you look what we are experiencing at the moment, we are experiencing or we are still suffering from the legacies of colonialism. The colonial curriculum designed or it, 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 it ensured that in terms of our education system, we create or we, we nurture cadres who are so obsessed with wanting to work for somebody. So at the moment, uh, what we are having, it's a situation where we have graduates, we are nurturing graduates, regardless of the efforts undertaken by the Midland State University to try to introduce students in, into modules such as entrepreneurship, and regardless of our efforts as the Department of Media and Society Studies. We still are producing cadres who are confined or who always think and who are always looking forward to the day when they get employed. They don't, they can't think. Perhaps it's because of the cliche, think outside the box. So if you remove the box, so it means they can't think. So the problem that we have, it's, it's, it's an experience for me, it's a problem of colonialism, the colonial mentality, where we always want to work for somebody. And the, another problem which I want to point out is that at the moment, it, it, but it's, we can't divorce it, divorce it from colonialism. We have a problem. Uh, at the moment, uh, in the university sector, uh, please, or oh, off the cuff, because of commercialization, no, let's continue. Because of the commercialization of, of, of education, uh, we are recruiting everybody and anybody. Um, some of the cadres who are coming or who are enrolling for our degrees, they are enrolling not because they want to get or to attain those uh, entrepreneurship skills. They are enrolling because there is no employment. It's, it's unlike in the past when people would say, for example, Let, let's go and get educated or let me go and attain or acquire this degree so that I will look for employment or I gain these skills. But now education or tertiary education has become it's, a, it's, it's something that is now, is now located, located in the realm of uh, killing time. Uh, somebody is here because there is no employment outside there. So at the end of the day, some of these people, they are here to, 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 to kill time 
uh, they are just chilling here and they are also growing up. It's, it's, it's now an experience of growing up, being at a tertiary institution. So at the, at the end of the day, uh, education has failed to degenerate or to generate into praxis. It's something that is, uh, the skills they acquire here have not been fully implemented. But to a larger extent, um, colonies, as Benjamin Disrael said, colonies do not cease to be colonies just because they are now independent. The thinking and the practice that we have continues to be informed by our colonial experiences. That is the missing link between Zimbabwe and, 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 Zimbabwe and, and, and India. India, of course, it was a colony, but we seem to have a problem in, in post-colonial African states uh, because you will find out that young people, they have no confidence in themselves. They don't want to they are not confident enough to start business projects or anything else. We are in a society which thrives in negativity. And even if you try to do anything or something else, people always look down upon you. And at the end of the day, we tend to lose confidence. And perhaps we need to adopt my all time favorite musician, Leonard Shakata, uh, sings, Aita Chakendi Umbaru Mewakoma na Murai. We need to learn to we need to learn to appreciate what we are doing. So we are a society so obsessed with negativity. So at the end of the day, we tend to lose confidence. And we always believe, ah, you should I'm saying. So that's the missing link between Zimbabwe and industry. We are look, always looking forward. And so said, so many years after the land reform program, uh, we embarked on the land reform program, I think sometime around 2000. Uh, and the land reform program was genuinely designed to correct imba land imbalances uh, in terms of ownership of imbalances designed and created by the colonial by the colonial or imperial governments. You could refer to your land apportionment act, the land tenure act, the land husband act. They were designedly uh, they, they were designed in favor of the imperial powers. But now you will always find Africans, these patriotic Zimbabweans, saying, ah. I think it's a a mistake. Uh, by now we should be having a functional industry. Yeah, we could be working in farms. Guys, it's, it's, it's time up. Uh, we need to find ways. Uh, we need to think. I'm happy the Midland State University uh, very soon is going to launch an innovative app where everybody uh, and anyone in the Midlands province, or even in Zimbabwe, somebody who wishes to go and launch or to, to, to create an innovation uh, is welcome. So we need confidence. There is, there, there is no confidence. We don't have confidence in ourselves in Zimbabwe. That's the problem. But there's something uh, we can trace to our colonial experiences. It's, it's part and parcel of the legacies, legacies of colonialism. So we need to try to shackle the, 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 the chains of colonialism. One day we will find ourselves somewhere. Undoubtedly, Entrepreneurship is the way to go. Uh, till when I would refer you to the to the Bible, I think it should be in the Book of Kings. Anzi, uh, Till when uh, are we going to continue crying or bemoaning to say, ah, if only we had jobs, if only if they were if we were employed, guys? Uh, it's quite clear the economy is emerging. The economy is not diving. It's something, it's a fact, you can't contest that fact. So what we are saying, uh, big men or big women, they don't continue crying when a problem comes, but they should always find solutions. So Zimbabwe is open for business. That's a very loaded term, it needs to be unpacked, especially from a decoloniality point of view. Where we are open for, it, for business, but I don't want to unpack it right now. But what I want to say, let's say, uh, young Zimbabweans, are open for innovation. <laughs> Let's be open for innovation. Let's be open for entrepreneurship. Let's try to open our minds uh, and try to come up with. We are open for business, but we as locals, let's try to come up with our own business ideas and then uh, put those ideas into proposition, implement them, and then we will be somewhere one of these days. We will be somewhere one of these days.